brand new year and the very first edition of Today with John and Helen on this station. And um, what a way to start off, you know, other than talking about the act and the passion of giving. And our very first guest this morning is um, Abimbola Ojenike, who is a lawyer and a social entrepreneur. Uh, Abimbola is also um, someone who leads and supports initiatives for social change with a passion to broaden access to justice and see children especially rise out of poverty and to prosper. He is co-founder and director at the Destiny Trust, a social intervention focusing on the holistic development of underpresented children. That's a new word, underpresented children through integrated initiatives in education, care, and empowerment. Abimbola, it's an honor to have you this morning on the program. Thank you. It's and thank my you pleasure for to taking be here. care of the society, especially the children. They're so passionate to some of us. And I'm seeing a word I probably don't see very often under represented. Under represented. Under represented. Under represented. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you are in the business of giving. What's the inspiration? Well, uh, I think the uh, understanding is forced from the fact that we have nothing except what has been given to us. Mm. So if you understand first that what you have is actually not yours, indeed you have a privilege to have what you have, quote and unquote, so you don't have any restraints at all, giving a part of that to another person. And indeed it's how we show gratitude, it's how we live. Because you understand that even the life that you have is not oh, yours. Yes. So you leave it out, leave it for others, give to others, and let's you know, celebrate our common humanity in that sense. John, that's deep. It's a fact. But how that, often... That is deep. And uh, I think it's easy for you to say because you have, you have processed it. You have been in it. What about the man on the streets? Has he been able to rationalize <laughs> this thought process? Mm -hmm. We'll be talking a little more about all of that uh, as, we, as we go along. But uh, just to remind our viewers that this is Today with John and Helen. And the topic for discussion is paying it forward. forward. Paying it forward. Now, um, Mr. Abimbola, paying it forward... If you attempt to translate it, you're a Yoruba man, I guess. Mm. <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you attempt to translate it into directly into Yoruba, it may give you a bit of uh, a wrong meaning. 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 Like when you... I down Misu Aju. Tell it to you. Tell it to you. That suggests that you are actually performing an act with the mindset mm. of reaping something back. So we won't go into that translation. Yes. What really, how do you think we should translate paying it forward? Sure. You know, I would see that as when you, when you get, you give. Uh, it's normal for you to want to give back to the person who is given to you. Mm. But the difference here is that it doesn't have to be that person. Give it to another person. When you enjoy a random act of kindness, show it to another person. And in that way, unconditionally, and in that way we can have a world or a society where good just flows freely. I mean, you do something to someone who goes to do it to another person, there is a multiplier effect as well. Mm. And you know, the world becomes a better place with so that. So that's what makes the world go round. Go round, exactly. Yeah. And that would be such a great feeling to yeah. see the world go around. Absolutely. Mm. Could mm. you, now that you've explained it to us, could you give us one or two examples, personal examples now, where you have had to give unconditionally? Okay. Um, an example, maybe I should use the example of the kind of work that we do okay. uh, in a practical way. When you go out for a young person, who quote-unquote has no hope. I don't believe that there is someone that doesn't have hope. If you are here, then that young man has hope. So when you lift that person out of a situation, your expectation is that one day 
this person would be yes, able to lift others mm. you know, out of that situation or something even worse. So in that way, uh, you have given to someone who goes to pay it forward and there is the multiplier and that's like the core of what we do. We're not looking at that one single individual who can be raised for his own personal benefit or that girl that can be raised just so that she can be another human being. That is not the idea. But when we raise you, you are able to raise a family. When we raise you, you are able to raise a community out of a situation. So yeah, that's more or less enabling somebody absolutely to be able to, to, enable to help all the people. people. Mm. Yes. Okay. Um, that sounds very, very beautiful. I wonder how practical you know, because you're talking about um, a situation where it's not just one person. Your passion and your prayer is that a lot more people will catch on this vision and pass it around. But we are in an environment where a lot of us are selfish, if I can use that word, because there's a lot of hardship. Um, there are so many needs, okay? And when this happens, how do you get around uh, from um, detaching from yourself and your needs to be able to see the need in the next person? <laughs> Because you, you may have enough problems on your yeah, own. Yeah, because we have, we have people <laughs> who enjoy receiving more in this environment Absolutely. than giving back. Well, everyone has something to give. That's, uh, that's the starting point. Mm -hmm. If you understand that what the other person is asking for, it's not necessarily something uh, that will take everything from you. There is something you had before that you're no longer using. That is mm -hmm. something that you can give to another person readily. It doesn't cost you anything at all. So uh, we can uh, develop that lifestyle first from understanding that there is one thing that you can give. Nobody is powerless. Nobody is powerless. And it starts with that first act of doing good. And you do another one. It becomes something that comes to you normally. And you know, before you know what, you're already known for uh, affecting lives around you. When you feel the joy that is in it, and you understand that that joy is deeper than holding on to the things that you think you have. Mm. I mean, it becomes what you do. Because really, um, I look at it at times, uh, when you give to someone, of course, appreciation is fine. But what you enjoy is uh, deeper than that appreciation uh, that any other person can express to you. The joy is yours, in a way. Because seriously, John, after last week's show, I was resolved when I left here to say I'm going to get members of my family together and find out what it is you know, we have at home that we haven't really used in the last six months, one year. And in a lot of homes, there are things like that that you haven't Absolutely. really got into using in a long time, sometimes more than one year. And I wanted to do that. You know, we had a small meeting and we, we, we discussed but we haven't acted on it. So that's why I'm looking at what is it that ignites you to get started? You know, the idea is there, thinking about it is another thing, but getting to do it. Just How do, do you it. move from that <laughs> point, you Just know, of feeling good? Okay, this is a good story. We, you know, it's good to help the next person so the next person can help. But how do you really get to it? Get on with it. Okay, uh, it, uh, you have to be intentional about it. I mean, that's uh, the reality. Uh, everyone wants to do good. Uh, if you talk to, uh, if you gather like a group of uh, 20 people and you ask everyone, everyone has one grand idea of what they would like to do for humanity. Oh, when I grow up, when I make my money, I will do so, 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 and so. It doesn't happen. You just have to start from that point that you think you don't even have just enough not when. to do what, not now. when, but it's really about now. So don't think about what, oh, tomorrow I want to go to an orphanage and give to people. Okay. Today, if you look outside of your compound, if you look outside of your gate, wow. there'll be one person that needs you. So you know, start from that person. So in essence, paying it forward doesn't, is not entirely, um, it, it doesn't entirely have to do with money. At all. No. It, it's not really about money. So you little can volunteer acts, to do something. Little acts of kindness, looking over your neighbor, Absolutely. taking care of your neighbor's children, helping mm. the old, 
cross the road, for instance. These are all acts yes, of even paying at work, it forward. Speaking to a colleague, trying to find out where they are in life and what you can do to help. And it doesn't really have to do with really helping them. Mm. Just listening to someone is an act of kindness. Mm. At times, it, it might be all that that person needs. So. But you, you, you have an organized setup. Set up. You have an organized you know, arrangement where your giving is, is consistent. Your giving is regular, if I can use that word. And you're dealing with children, you know, as the set of human beings that are, a lot of them, we have more children who really are in need. And my next question is, how do you find them? They're everywhere, you know. But it, people don't trust people. You might have good intentions you, when you find a child somewhere and you want to help, but your intentions might be misunderstood. So how do you really find the kind of children or the kind of people that you extend this hand of fellowship and they really also welcome and um, accept your help? How do you find them? Okay. Um, when you meet the category of people we're talking about, they are always willing to receive the help that you have to render. So you don't even have to do so much thinking about how to make sure that you receive the help. They are already there waiting for waiting you. For the help. So we see them on the street. Um, many times I park on the road to just you know, speak to a child in traffic. I wind down to speak to someone. Why are you here? Where is your mother? Where is your father? When did you get here? What brought you here? And at times, maybe just a bottle of water in the car. You just give to the person. You say that, I'll come back here to check you another day. You already have some kind of initial interaction yeah. that they can build on. Next time they see you in traffic, they're running after you. Hey, hey, that Baba, will they give us lower? Will they give us water? And somebody wants to speak to you again. Mm -hmm. So the day you look for the mother and you're talking to the mother, it shouldn't be a problem anymore mm -hmm. because they already know you for you know, taking interest in them. And beyond the people that we see on the streets, we also go into communities. And uh, some of these communities are already familiar with the work that we do. They, in fact, they even call to say that, oh, uh, they just pulled down where we are uh, in one slum. We need accommodation and or we need a child to go back to school. So in that sense, we are not doing so much to persuade the people to receive the help. There is already a structure that they are familiar with. There is already that face. They already know that if uh, someone is coming from this organization, they are here for them. And they know the pattern of the work we do. They know that the focus is on the education. And for uh, education to be possible, to be stable, we know that we have to intervene in aspects of care, uh, other basic needs as well. So they know that it's holistic. In a sense, but, but Mr. Mr. Ojenke, um, I, I, I want to see the part, what has happened, what has changed. Has there been a paradigm shift? Because culturally, mm. culturally, at least growing up, I know that um, it was easier to give, even if it was in smaller portions, in relation to what we do today. Okay. It was easier to give, to help in those days than it is now. What has changed? Well, <laughs> development. Mm, development, yes, if, if I can use that word. Um, the composition of our society has changed in many ways. Even the way we live, the kind of community that we live in. We are no longer in that uh, whole uh, family compound where uh, you're here, your uncle is mm. next. Mm. Uh, someone who is a family member is around. I mean, we used to do good within the family fold before. So nobody can say I'm homeless. Oh, the family house is there. And nobody can say I'm hungry. You can go to your uncle's house and get a meal. Mm -hmm. But that's no longer the case. We're all scattered. I mean, you have your village people still in the village and you're here mm -hmm. in Lagos. They need to call you before they can get anything from you. And if you don't pick their call, exactly. <laughs> if you don't pick their call, that's the end of it. Yeah, because yeah. you see, basically, I ask myself the question, even if I don't ask them, what is in it for me? Mm. Is there anything that I should look for as before in return give. before mm. I give? That's my mindset now. If I'm not getting anything back, 
from you. It's not likely that I will take your call. Yes, so that individualism actually grew out of the fact that in terms of even the architecture of the society, it's you and your family. Mm. It's no longer that collective thing. You're not living with other people. Then it was not like the normal way of thinking. If you wake up in the same place with them, you do things with them, they care for you when you have a need, you will not make it all about yourself. But now, in your duplex, it's you and your family members. Sure. So it's normal for you to say, oh, it's about me first. Those people in the village, I love them, I care about them. When I have an excess, I'll send to them. But right here, first, I need to attend to myself. And then we also understand that the economy is changing. Yeah. Uh, people are uh, beginning to think seriously about how they use their resources. Mm -hmm. They think that because there is scarcity, so to say, then they have to keep just enough for themselves and the people that they are directly responsible for. So it's no longer that large, yeah. like community, family. It's you first. And when you're done, whatever is left, you give to others. And that's Be the before, problem we have Before now. we let you go, thank you for that. Before we let you go, talking about the economy and scarcity, um, you're doing such a wonderful job. You're reaching out to a lot of people, and that costs money. Is this full-time for you? How do you get resources? Uh, first, it's not full-time for me. Uh, I work full-time as a lawyer. So I'm a lawyer uh, by day. Uh, I go to court. I do transactions. Okay. I go for meetings. So I still have my life as a lawyer. <laughs> mm, that's good. Yes, but uh, for what we do, uh, we depend on the power of community to keep our work going. And ordinary people will contribute. Uh, consistently on a monthly uh, basis. Some people give as low as 1,000. Some give uh, even 500. On a regular basis. On a regular basis. We have people mm. who give 250 Naira. And for me, I tell my team that when I see a donation of 250 Naira, for me it's so significant mm, because mm, mm. it shows an intention to do something. Mm. And people like this, they express trust in what we do. Mm -hmm. It's a clear statement that I don't have all that you need, mm. but this need mm. you I'm giving mm. to you, mm. trusting that you can multiply it and use it to change yeah, someone's well. life. Yes. Mm. So yeah. when we see that, we are more determined mm. to go all the way to use that 250 Naira to change someone's life and to be able to report to that person that thank you for that 250 Naira that you gave to us. Mm. By the way, if mm. we put 250 Naira together in like four places, mm. it can buy a child a school center, and that's that, exactly what that, we did. That is profound. That yeah. indeed is an eye-opener for many of us. So many of us who wish to do something. And we're waiting until and we have waiting, so much. Yes. So, so I mean, for Finally. other people like me, let's assume, for other people like me who don't know how to go about it, how to initiate this move, could you, in the next... Maybe 30, 30 seconds. seconds. Just give us some advice. Okay, so the truth is that you have to start now. And it doesn't really matter what you have. I mean, no matter how small, just start giving it to someone. Show an interest in someone. If it's not money, create time. Teach some kids about communication somewhere. Mentor your child. It doesn't have to be money in the real sense. If you have just your weekend, one high every weekend, give it to someone to tell that person the right course in life. And then you see what comes out of that in the coming years. We're, awesome. ever, we're ever so grateful, Mr. Awesome. Ojenike. Awesome. Mr. Awesome. It's my Ojenike. pleasure. And you know he just spoke to you. Yes. You're a coach. <laughs> so he says, find someone. Teach yes. that person the act of communication. Communication, yes. Mm? So you have an assignment. I have an assignment. <laughs> I, have, I have a takeaway. So thank you very much, Mr. Thank you. Uh, it's my pleasure. For, for thank coming. you. Um, uh, thank you for having me. Well done. Well done. We really appreciate your time. So at this time, we'll take a short break, and then later we'll be speaking to our counselor. Don't go away.